Hello everyone. In this episode, we'll be building on the last one and adding behaviors to the newly added tiles and objects. So let's dive straight into it. First of all, we're going to need a way to tell the various tiles apart. In our last game, Ski or Parish, we added a custom data property so we can distinguish hazards, ramps, and the finish line. But notice here in the code that first we check what layer we're on in the tile map and then proceed to check the value of the custom property. It feels a bit redundant to check for both, so in this game I want to use layers only to separate behaviors. Another thing I'm not quite happy with in Skier Parish is how the player had both a Character Body 2D node and an Area 2D node. This is because Character Body 2D doesn't have any signals for entering and exiting shapes unlike Area 2D. This also required us to duplicate collision shapes as well. Thankfully, our ball object, which is a rigid body 2D, does have the necessary signals. Now that that's out of the way, let's add some colliders to our new tiles. I achieved this by highlighting each individual tile and pressing the F key to mark the entire tile. Next, I'm going to turn the flag tiles into an animated tile. I need to erase the extra frames first, keeping only the first one. Set the number of columns and add some frames. Four frames, actually. Now I'll add a collision shape to the hole. For this I'll use the Add Polygon tool. After I've added enough points and click back on the initial point, the shape is complete. Notice that when I select the other animation frames that the collision preview doesn't change. This is because every frame of the animation shares the same collision shape. I'll fine tune the points a little bit so we match the shape of the hole more closely. I'll do the same for the bottom of the windmill. First on the left side, then on the right. Next, I want to add some layers. For this, I need to modify my tile map node and not my tile set resource. This means that these layers will be unique to this specific node in this specific scene. But as mentioned earlier, we'll be using the scene as a template for other scenes, so it won't be a problem. It's just something to keep in mind in case you want to reuse layers in your own projects. I just noticed that the windmill is comprised of three individual tiles. I'll fix this by erasing the tiles, then recreate them while holding down the shift key. It's one large tile now. I'll finish by recreating the hitbox. Notice how I'm only marking the base of the windmill. This is because we don't want to collide with the higher parts. That way, it will look like the ball is moving behind it. You'll see this in action shortly. Let's place one of these on the test map. That doesn't look right. We can fix this by raising the Z index value of this specific tile. I'll set it to 1. To be honest, I don't actually know why only part of the object showed up. I was expecting all or nothing. Let's try this out live. Notice how the ball goes through the building. This is almost good. We just want the ball to be drawn underneath. And we successfully collide with the bottom of the building. I'll fix this by raising the Z index of the tower to be even higher. I'll set it to 2 this time. Now we're successfully traveling behind the windmill, and we can successfully go through the hole in the front. I'm happy with this for now. Let's move on to the blades. First, I'll make a folder for the blades. Then, I'll move the sprite of an individual blade into the folder. I'll get rid of the other sprite with all the blades. We don't need that one. Then I'll make a new 2D scene for the blade. I'll change the node type of the scene to be a static body 2D. The windmill blade obviously won't be a static object. The reason I chose static object 2D is because I won't be moving it with physics or a script, but rather an animation player, which makes static body 2D a suitable node type. I'll add the sprite next. I'll also set the texture filtering property to nearest to sharpen up the look, and then add a collision shape. Notice how I only marked the large part of the blade for collision. We want to leave the handle alone. We're gonna want to rotate the windmill blade, but notice how its pivot point is located in the center. Let's fix that. First, I'll turn off the center property under Offset. This sprite has a lot of wasted space, so I'll adjust the X offset to bring the visible parts closer to the edge. I'll flip it vertically and adjust the Y axis too. Then move the collision shape back in place. And there we have it. It now rotates from the bottom of the handle, just as we want. Before I move on, I'll just adjust the default rotation to point upwards. I'll now create a new scene called Windmill Blades, plural, and drag four of the individual blades into it. 
Then I'll move the blades into place. I'm holding down the control key to rotate them in larger increments. I plan on moving them using an animation player node, so I'll add that to the scene. Now on the bottom, in the animation tab, I'll add a new animation track and call it Rotate. While the animation tab is active, notice that these little key icons appear in the inspector. This is a shortcut for quickly adding properties to the animation tracks. I'll add the rotation property of the root node. Now I'll set the duration of the animation to 10 seconds and add some keyframes. I'll add a keyframe to the beginning, middle and end. In the middle, I'll set the rotation to 180 degrees and at the end to 360 degrees. Let's preview the animation. That looks good, but I think I'd rather have it spin the other way. To achieve this, I'll simply set the angles to be negative. Yes, I think that looks better. If I load the scene up now, notice that the animation doesn't start playing on its own. To remedy this, I'll press on the Auto Play on Load button down here in the Animation tab. This setting was moved here in Godot 4. It used to be in the Inspector in previous versions. Okay, let's drag the blades into our test scene. It renders behind the windmill, so let's raise the Z index. We need to go even higher than the windmill, so I'll set it to free. Let's test the scene. The ball is colliding with the windmill blades as expected. Now I'll move the ball in front of the windmill to test the passageway. Notice how the ball still collides with the blades in the back. We don't want that. Aha, and also notice how the animation stops after one cycle. I forgot about that. Let's start with the easier of the two. In the Animation tab, press on the Animation Looping button to make them repeat. Much better. In order to fix collision, I'll also animate the collision layer property of each blade. First, make sure we're at the beginning of the timeline, and make sure we have the right blade selected. Now we can start animating. My intention is to enable collision when the blade is below the vertical line in the viewport, and disable when it's above. I've repeated this process for all the blades. Let's see it in action. Perfect! We no longer collide with the blades while the ball is behind the windmill. And we still collide while in front. I might adjust the angles, but for now I'm happy. Before we start implementing the water and sand tiles, let's add a couple on the map. I'll add a small pond on the left side, and a sand pit on the right. I'll also name the layers to make them easier to keep track of. If we test the map out how it is, you'll notice that the ball just bounces off the pond and sand as if they were walls. This is obviously not what we want, so let's start fixing it. I'm going to remove all the hitboxes first, starting with the sand tiles, then the water tiles, then finally from the flag tile. In order to properly distinguish all these tiles, I'll create a few new physics layers. I'll place each one of them on a unique collision layer, but keep the collision mask set to 1. The collision mask determines which objects the layer can collide with. We're setting it to 1 because the ball is on layer 1. Now I'll start adding the hitboxes back. Each tile will have its hitbox on its respective physics layer. The flag goes on layer 1, then the water goes on layer 2, and finally the sand goes on layer 3. Let's try it out. The ball is going through the tiles now. This is starting to look like progress. Let's implement some custom collision rules. I'll add a signal to the ball to trigger on body shape entered. Now I'll add some code to check if we're colliding with a tile map node. If so, then we'll loop through all the layers of the tile map and print out which one we collided with. For this to work correctly, we need to enable contact monitoring on the ball and raise the max contacts above zero. One will be just fine for our needs. If we test our map again, notice that we get some new debug messages. Layer two when colliding with water, and layer 3 when colliding with sand. This is great. We're able to tell what kind of tile we're colliding with. We can use this information to implement some interesting behaviors. I'll start with the sand tiles first since they're easier to implement. The goal is to make the ball move slower while in the sand pit. So let's begin by creating a way for the ball to move faster and slower. I'll add some constants to the top of the ball script and a movement factor variable for the current state of the ball. We need to initialize the value first 
I'll assume we always start on grass, and we'll need to use this value in the method where we apply physics to the ball. Now, in the collision signal, if we detect a collision with layer 3, which represents sand, we'll set the movement factor for sand. I'll try this out quickly by putting the ball into the sand pit. Now, when I try to escape, you'll notice that the amount of force that gets applied to the ball is visibly smaller. We're also going to need a way to undo this change. I'll add a signal for on body shape exited. Copy and paste the body from above and just reverse the logic. I'll also change the message for testing purposes. Let's see this in action. There it is. We can now successfully enter and exit zones. Before we handle the water tiles, let's do a bit of refactoring. I'll move this call to apply impulse into the ball. Then I'll add a new variable to the ball to store the last known position and immediately initialize it in the ready method. Then I want to save the position every time we move the ball. Next, I'll add a method to stop the ball. I accomplished this by setting its linear velocity to zero and the method to reset the ball's position to the last known position. Now let's put it all together using an animation player. I'll only add one animation track called Die and Reset. This animation will be played when our ball falls into the water. It'll be two seconds long. The first track I'm going to animate is Visibility. During the animation, the ball will start off invisible, then reappear at the end. This will make it look like the ball sank into the water. The next track I want to add is Audio. We first need to add an Audio Stream Player 2D and assign it a track. I'll use this track we made using a white noise effect. Now I can add an audio player track to the animation. Finally, I'm going to add a method track and select the ball. This will allow me to call a specific method on the ball on a specific keyframe. On the first frame, I'm going to invoke the stop method from earlier. Then on the last frame, I'll call reset position. Let's go back to our collision signal now. I'll add an extra if branch for the water tiles that will play our new animation. Let's see this in action now. Looks good. When we collide with the water, we hear a splash sound, then after a bit, we respawn to the place we took the shot from. Instead of using magic numbers for the layers, I'll replace them with constants to make the code more clear. The final type I'm going to work on is the hold tile. In the layer settings of the tile map, I'm going to rename layer 1 to hold. Then, I'm going to place a hold tile on the same layer, here in the upper right corner. Now let's write some code. I'll add a constant for the whole layer on top of the ball script. Then I'll extend the if clause in the collision signal and invoke a win method. Then a few lines above, I'll implement the win method. It won't do anything fancy for now. It'll call q3 to delete the ball in order to give the effect of it sinking into the hole. And I'll print a message to tell us that we've won. We'll properly implement the win method in a later episode to make it switch between levels. There's one last change I need to make. Down here, we're only permitting collision with water and sand. Let's extend this collision to include all special layers. Let's try it out now. Can we get a hole in one? Yes, we can. Fantastic. That's it for today. In the next episode, we're going to be working on a user interface, the menus, level transition screens, and so on. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to keep up with the development process. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.